Hi friends, Robin here. So you may have noticed that we are on a little hiatus between seasons three and seasons four. Don't worry though, we are not leaving you. While you wait, we're revisiting some episodes from our previous three seasons. Ooh, ooh, and we also have... Where are they now videos on our social media channels that you can check out. So make sure you are following at real Rob hops and at edit over on the Instagram. Now sit back and relax and listen to, well, I'd say one of our favorite episodes, but that's just not true because we love all our guests. So sit back and enjoy an episode that deserves an encore. Oh, and we will be back with new episodes on Tuesday, March 19th. Mark your calendars or, hey, just follow us on the socials so you don't miss a minute of well-adjusting. Woo! Edit audio. I'm going to be honest, people. My 20s were an absolute hot garbage mess. I got rejected from all kinds of jobs, including being a backup secretary at the World Trade Center. I managed a restaurant called Stick to Your Ribs. I worked for six months at Citibank as a temp. I think, I'm not sure, but my title, it was something like Mortgage Delinquency Specialist. To this day, I have no idea what I did at that job other than copy the tasks from the big paper desk calendar onto the next month and then run some reports. I was, however, famous for spreading out lots of folders on my desk and saying, oh, I am swamped whenever anyone tried to give me more work that I didn't understand or simply did not want to do. I borrowed clothes from my roommate because I didn't have any corporate wear. I wore silky button-down tops with coordinating vests because I thought that that looked fancy. (laughs) I lived in all the neighborhoods no one wanted to live in. I was constantly broke. I had no, like zero frigging idea what I was doing or how to do whatever it was that I was supposed to be doing that I didn't even know I was supposed to be doing. I was in a new city. I was angsty, a bit emotional, and I was just mostly looking to have a good time hanging out with my friends after work. I look back on those days now and I think those were the best of times, but they were also the worst of times. Hello, everyone. I'm Robin Hopkins, and this is Well Adjusting, where I talk to people about life stuff, but not in an NPR way. It's more like we're at the bar, having cocktails, getting into your business sort of way. It's it's giving drunk NPR. Oh, and producer Steph is here, too. Hello. Today we chat, well, those tumultuous 20s. Hey, everybody. Today's episode is pretty darn exciting, if I do say so myself. We are talking with Taylor. Now, Taylor is in the middle of about, I'm just approximating here, but four million life transitions. She's a recent college grad. She's got a new job. She's living back at home, trying to move out and get her own place, maybe move across the country. And at the same time, she's trying to navigate all these changes while showing up and working and learning all the adulting that's expected of her. This is no easy time in anyone's life. So Taylor came to us, and now we are about to really get into it. So are you ready? Because here's Taylor. I'm Taylor Jennings Brown. Um, Who am I? I don't know. I'm a (laughs) 23-year-old. Um, I'm a 23-year-old. I live in Durham, North Carolina. An ex-journalist, still low-key a journalist, uh, now a podcast worker. I don't really know. I'm like navigating that that realm. Um, I'm a creative. I like to say that. It's so cliche, but that's the best word to describe who I am. Like right now, I'm at a very pivotal uh, point in life, and I've just been experiencing tons of transitions um career wise relationship wise uh personality wise like even just like who is taylor like who am i becoming who is this woman do i recognize myself what do i want to be like all those types of things so there's physical transitions of like just changing but then there's also just like internal changes yeah and um I'm kind of in a place right now where I just, I don't know how to navigate those things. And I don't know how to 
set myself up basically for for success, but like also be present. And it's just a very turbulent time. (laughs) It really is. It really is. Since you were probably three years old, I mean, if you went to daycare, you've been on a schedule. Your life has been dictated where you go, what you do. And even in college, even though you have all that freedom, you're still on that schedule. And then all of a sudden we're just like, all right, then good luck out there. I've always said I feel like there should be a one-credit course that all juniors and seniors are required to take that's about, like, going out into the world. Because it's like we focus on the education, but we don't talk about the social-emotional growth and what it's going to be like to just all of a sudden be like, who the fuck am I? I'm 20-something, and I don't know who I am. Literally. That's me right now. (laughs) Well, so let's let's talk about it a little bit. Like, tell us a little bit about what you're doing now and maybe some of the things that are, I'm using the phrase like uneven, but are just a little all over the place for you. Yeah. So I went to University of South Carolina um, in Columbia and I graduated with a degree in mass communications and I did a fellowship with NPR for a year. So I moved to DC from Columbia, spent the year there. That was a crazy transition in itself. So I'm in a new state away from home. First time like having my own apartment and paying rent and like all these different things that adults do. Yep. And then it's like wintertime and nobody's out and about in DC in the wintertime. I don't yeah. know anyone besides my roommate, but she's like in school. So she's like busy. And I was at the time in like a long distance relationship that wasn't necessarily the healthiest. And mm-hmm. um, there were so many transitions just in that year there Yeah, um, from like meeting people and like, getting out of my comfort zone, learning how to handle like issues on my own. One of my close friends passed away while I was there. So that was like tough. Yeah. Then like I went through a bad breakup and then I moved back home in November of last year, which I never intended to do. So it's like, it was just like back to back to back. Yeah. Like all in 2022. So friend passed and then that, you know, that grief just takes a, yeah, it takes time. I mean, it's still, I'm still in it, but, um, yeah. And then like, and then you're back in your childhood. Yeah. Bedroom. And I'm back home. And then I had like a lot of unresolved things from being home. Yeah. And then I'm still like devastated over the breakup. And I was in between jobs. <laughs> yeah. Those are all every one of the things that you just, you know, moving breakups, death, being out of work. Yeah. Those are all humongous stressors on like the top list of stressful life events. So you're hitting all of them. Plus you're in this new space of like, who am I as, as a young adult? Yeah. Things are like, I guess they're more um, stable. Uh, Yeah. I have a job now. It's remote. But things are are ramping up because I I have plans to move across the country (laughs) to California. Oh, you Um, are moving. You are moving. Yeah. I'm moving to LA. Hopefully at the end of the year, if latest, like the start of next year. So now I'm, I'm like, I'm finally getting adjusted to this stage in life. And I'm like, it's about to change all over again. It's really about to just completely be upheaved and it's going to, I'm going to have to start all over. (laughs) Well, okay. So what's interesting here already is you're clearly a doer, right? I don't believe we're going to be having a conversation that's like, well, have you made lists of what you want to do? Like, it's not, it's not a question of you not, like you got a fellowship at NPR. Mm -hmm. Like that's a coveted type position. You got a new job in in media. You've already have plans and it sounds like you're planning it out. So it's not the doing, it's the state of everything fluctuating around you. Is that fair? Yeah. It's more just a lot of big emotions and um, trying to navigate all of that. It's kind of, I'm doing it, but it's tough sometimes. Well, let's let's talk a little bit about that. Like what's prevalent for you and how does it present? Like how do you know? Because I think sometimes like I don't often know I'm in my emotions until I did something like really volatile. Like I just started yelling at somebody or something and then I'm like, oh shit, what's going on with me? So like how do you know you're in your own emotions? Um, I'm a crier. I cry all the time. Me too. Like over everything. So I guess right now the biggest emotions for me are like – Mm, there's f- frustration as a, of the lately. I'm frustrated because of my emotions. <laughs> um, so like I said, breakup was in like uh, fall of last year. I'm like, dude, we're like six months. We're still dealing with this. Like it's still yeah, why triggering. am I still thinking about this? Yes. But yeah. It's still yeah. very much so like not healed. We're working on it. But so there's yeah. frustration with that. But then like also, I guess not quite anxiety, but a little bit of like, oh uh, yeah, a little bit of like anticipation, anxiety about the future and like this upcoming move and 
and what that's going to look like. Yeah, exactly. And then leaving, I think a lot of like the little things that I've, not little, the big things that I just talked about happening over the like past year, this move and this like new thing that's coming up in life, it feels like the transitioning moment to closing a lot of chapters. And yeah. that's, that's scary. That's very yeah. scary. Cause like I'm holding on to stuff that I'm like, you probably should have let that go already, but like, I don't know. Well, that, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, what we know that the first word to let go is should, because it's like, well, says who it's with you for as long as it's with you, you know, but then it's like, if it's impeding you, then you need to get some help. But like the idea of where you should be, you are where you are. Yeah. <laughs> So let's let's go back. Like, what do you do just out of curiosity? Like, what do you do when you're anxious or when you're like, because starting a new job can be really scary. I don't know about you, but when I start a new job, I'm like, do I know what I'm doing? Like, do I know how to do this? Or what am I supposed to do? And am I busy enough? Am I not busy enough? Am I too busy? Am I taking too long? Like all those things until you get your rhythm, which can take a minute. Sometimes I can't even process like all the things that are happening. I got to pick just one thing. Um, yeah. But I guess my way of like processing those emotions is I started therapy not too long ago. So that's very new Yay! for me. Yeah. <laughs> very new. Um, That itself is a little scary, but I'm like, okay, let's that's just very stick scary. with it. It's like the gym. <laughs> like it sucks, but like I know it's going to pay off. So I'm going to keep doing that. Um, I meditate. I don't do it daily like I should, but you know, I'm trying to get there. I am a, a woman of faith. So my faith is very, it, it's always been a grounding for me, like just throughout my life. And it's transitioned as I've gotten older and experienced new things and kind of like found my own voice and my own way of seeing the world. Mm -hmm. But it's still there. And I think that um, just like those conversations for me, like conversations with God and just like sitting in nature, really like moving back home to North Carolina yeah. and being able to just be around trees instead of the city has been so helpful. So like, I'll just go outside, literally like no shoes, no socks, just stand in like my backyard and just kind of like look at what's around me. And that really and helps. the neighbors are like, she's doing it again. Yeah, they probably are. They're like, look at this weird girl. Like what's happening? <laughs> that girl's got I'm no like... shoes out in the backyard again. <laughs> That's what we're here for. We're supposed to be outside exactly. barefoot. Exactly, exactly. But no, exactly. moments like that help ground me and just like looking at like, I sound like a hippie, but like literally like, no. I'll just like go outside at night and just look up at the stars. And it kind of reminds me of like, hey, you are very small in this like big yeah. grand scheme of things. You're important, but like you're also inconsequential at the same time. And that's like beautiful. So like those are things that I do to kind of just, I listen to music. Music helps a lot. I love to write poetry. So like that's how I like, sometimes I can't really articulate the big emotions I have. So I'll just write and whatever comes out, I'm like, oh. That's what I'm feeling. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've been thinking a lot lately about life is going to have these ebbs and these flows and, and hard things are going to come. But like, what do I make of it? Do I just like ride it out, like actually lean into the emotion, be with it, and then it passes quicker? Because when I hold on to things, they stay with me much, much longer and I'm meaner and then, I, you know, and I just I'm like, you know, I'm like angry yeah. all the time. Like I just hearing in everything you say, what a doer you are, you know, like you're like, I do this, I do this, I do this, I do all these things to try to to manage. But like, I'm just thinking about like, what if there is like that leaning into just being like, everything's okay and it's all right. And I am where I am today and it might flow out. And then you might give yourself room for some new emotion to come in behind that. Do you, do you know what I'm saying? I do. It's funny you say that because moment of transparency. This morning at the, I work out a lot and I was at the gym today and um, I'm doing this like new workout plan that's like, it's more of like athletic training versus like just my like regular uh, weight training. So I'm trying yeah. a lot of new movements and um, it's fun. But today I was kind of already in a little bit of a funk. And then some of the movements, like, I just wasn't getting them. Like, I wasn't feeling strong. <laughs> I was just like, what is this? Like, it felt like, like, I don't work out every day. Yeah. And I had to, like, like, I got emotional. I started crying. Like, yeah. I sound like a, like, I sound like a baby, but, like, I was just like, I can't do this. Like, I felt so inadequate from the gym. And I had this moment where I was like, like, it was a very brief moment where I was like, dude, like, you can just stop. It's okay. Like, you yeah. have to... You don't have to complete everything like and I I think that's something that 
I've been so trying to do everything well. <laughs> I was just going to say, like, are you are you an absolute perfectionist? Like, what kind of pressure do you put on yourself? I'm a perfectionist who likes to hide behind, like, oh, no, I'm laid back. I'm cool. I'm just going with the flow. <laughs> but in reality, I'm actually, like, if I, if I don't do something well, I'm beating myself up about it. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just, like, have a lot of, like, sticky thoughts. <laughs> um. You know, you just have like random things come into your mind about like situations or like um, it's not even like that, like at work, like, oh, I'm stressed about this or this is happening or this is triggering me. It really is just like my mind just like will wander. It'll go back to like something that happened a long time ago, maybe a few weeks ago or hours ago that made me feel a certain way. And I start like fixating on it yeah. and like kind of creating these stories in my head. Or feeling like, oh, I should have done this. Or I wish things would have been this way. Like, things like that. And then that causes, like, a lot of, like, emotions. Because I'm like... Yeah. Or I've noticed also, especially lately, I have been avoiding... You know when you start, you just kind of feel something. But, like, you feel, like, the physical feeling of an emotion. And sometimes it's random. Nothing's triggering it. I can't say that, like, one thing, like, during the week necessarily caused me to, to have this feeling. Like, I could just be feeling a certain way. But instead of, like, leaning into it, like you are saying, Robin... Lately, I've noticed that I, I like try to avoid it. Yeah, like, just focus on all the things I have to do at work, or yeah, go to the. You're gym gonna try to or... to do list it away. Yes, literally. Um, yeah. P.S. That never works. Just, <laughs> yeah, just I'm starting to see that it doesn't work. It just no. does not work. It does not it, work. It comes back bigger, and I'm crying at the gym the next day. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah you no. get a lot of shit done, but you don't feel any better. Exactly. So I guess like that's more so how it comes up in my day to day is when I have the moments where um. I'm not busy and there's like nothing to do. I'm like, oh, <laughs> who am I? I have, yeah, I have these feelings. I have these, these like, these things that like I've been trying to not think about. Yeah. So that's kind of how it comes up on the day to day basis. It's not like I'm stressed at work or uh, like my family is just making me crazy. Like it's, I mean, sometimes. <laughs> but you know what's funny is like when you were talking, I just had this image of just like wanting to be like, Let's just stop for a second and take a breath. Yeah. Because it's like I can feel, I can actually feel your anxiety and the processor in your brain. Like zing, 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 zing. Like I think more of the standing in the yard with your feet in the grass is 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 a great idea. And I think the therapy is a great idea. I, I was also thinking too about how you have all these things that are in flux, including your home space. This is temporary and you're aware of that. And I feel like the sooner that you can get to your move and and get a place, because there is really something about that environment, your home, making it your own, putting things around that are yours, you know, putting things around that bring you joy, you know, like Marie Kondoing the shit out of your place. And I just, I wonder if maybe something, there's something in there for you there of just finding a way to make something yours for now. And maybe getting out there a little sooner, if possible, because the end of the year is a long time. I mean, I don't know. I don't want to get into your finances no. and all of that, but you know, what are you waiting on? I guess is my question. Money. <laughs> okay, that's and by the way, that's real. That is real. Yeah, Cali's expensive, honestly. In in like, also, my best friend's getting married in November, and I'm in her wedding. <laughs> sure. So I'm like, might as well wait. But no, it, it's like that was one of my big uh, anxieties about moving home. Was mm-hmm. one just like you're back. In a place where um all your triggers all your triggers exactly. are exactly yeah and a lot of like people and and to be frank some family members that i was able to distance myself from i didn't have to engage i could i could ignore um yeah now that i've been home i've had to i've had to deal with some stuff and it's been a, it's been a blessing it's uncomfortable but it's it's getting better but like that was all the that was part of it. But then a big part was like, I don't have my space. I don't have like my safe space to be me fully, um, to explore like who Taylor is, who this version of Taylor is, who she's becoming. What is she like? What does she want to listen to? Does she want plants in her house? Does she want to be like water conscious? Does she want to like have quiet? Like, oh my gosh, I value quiet spaces so much. And I don't have that as much now that I live you know, with other people and a 12 year old and my little cousin. And it's just like a lot of other stimuli that like I didn't have before. And, and also not feeling like, even though, um, the people I I live with, like it's my aunt who's like a second mom. Um, and they've really embraced me my whole life as if I was their child. 
but like it's still this thing in my head of like, this isn't like you are a guest here. No matter yes. how many times she yes. tells me, like, stop acting like that. Stop asking if you can have this. Like, it's still just like, this isn't my space. This isn't my home. I didn't grow up here. Yeah. Um, I don't pay bills here. And I'm a very independent person. Like, my mom, like, raised me to, you know, you don't take advantage of people. You work for what you get. So I have that in my head. I'm like, it's a lot of weird um nuances so like I really am looking forward to having my own space and then also not feeling uncomfortable to like I was saying just be me like if I want to blast Meg the Stallion I want to do that like if I want to sit in the middle of like the yard and meditate and not look like a weirdo I want to do that yeah so I don't know if there's a way to expedite it but that's something I'm I'm looking forward to. It scares me to move all the way over there, not knowing people really. But it also is like invigorating to be like, this is the opportunity for me to continue what I yes. started in D.C. Scary is good. Scary is good, generally speaking. <laughs> uh, certain types of scary. But I feel like I have to say, and I know I just had a whole thing about shoulds, but like, I really want you to like, just go gentle with yourself you are putting an extreme amount of pressure on yourself to figure all of these things out. You know, there's this whole concept that who Taylor is and who Taylor is going to be is happening every single day. There is no deadline on who you become or when you have to be that person. Like it, it's going to come when it comes and it is happening right now. That's one thing. If, if there's a way for you to like try to be a little gentler with yourself, a little kinder to yourself and put a little less pressure, I think that would be really helpful. What's interesting to me is that when we were like, okay, who are you? You're like, oh my God, I don't know. And sort of like panicked about it. But then as we started talking... In most of the sentence you've said to us, you've like given us little indicators of who you think you are and and the things that you like either love to do or value, whether it's like having your feet in the grass or, you know, finding a way to speak to a God that works for you. Like those are very big things that people don't find in themselves. Maybe you're not tying it to the idea of who you are, but those things all make up who you are. So I was thinking, and I, I love to give people homework that. It sounds like when we say like who you are, that brings up a lot of like negative, like, okay, well, who should I be? And like, what should I be doing? And what more can I be doing? And like, how am I going to be like defining myself? And what's LA going to look like? And there are a lot of weird inconsistencies going on in your life right now. But like, you are always going to be the constant in your life. And so thinking of what positive things are inside yourself that you feel like are like good pillars of who you are that you can hold on to when the times feel like really inconsistent. That's beautiful. Yeah. So you're not like swayed as much. No, that's so beautiful. And I'm, I'm like going to write that down and do that. (laughs) (laughs) Thank Thank you. (laughs) And, you know, and also I think just like to add on to that is like, if there can be some kind of like a declaration in the morning or whenever you feel like you're very stressed or you feel like you, it seems like you have a really good sense of when your emotions are coming in, either you start crying, like you have an awareness of your emotional self. And I think that's wonderful. So it's like, as it's coming in, what if you just, you know, there's a declaration that's just like, I'm going to I'm going to take it easy today. And what I find in doing that, because that's just something I've been like really experimenting with, because like the idea of me saying to myself, go go gentle, Robin, like that's the stupidest thing. I've never, I just recently started saying that to myself, just recently started saying that. And I'll be like, all right, so if I'm going to go take a walk this morning, I'm in a, a foul mood. I'm going to just let myself take a walk. I don't have to do double duty and turn this into a power walk and be thinking about the calories I'm burning. I'm just going to take the walk. And then I am not going to try to kick off every single thing on my to-do list for today. I'm just going to do the things that have to get done today. When I started doing that, the craziest motherfucking thing happened. I'm doing more and I'm less stressed. It was amazing. And I started my whole day in that direction. And then everything was gentler. So it's like, I wonder if there's declarations like that can be made when you start to feel like you know, it's just that next step after recognition. Yeah. Things are messed up. What can I do to be kind to myself and to slow down? Yeah, I think that would be so helpful for me. Um, even like going back to this morning at the gym, like it was like an internal struggle. Yeah. Of me, like, like the part of me that's like, Taylor, you know, you can like, 
you don't have to do all these reps. You can do like a, a easier progression or you can like, you can water this down. You could literally pack your bag and leave right now. Like yeah. it's not going to, but then there was a part of me that was like, no, you got to finish this. You don't quit. You have to do this. If you don't finish this right now, like you're going to be regretting it the rest of the day. And so I ended up finding like a happy like medium between those. But like it just watching that in my head was it was insightful for me to yeah. be like, oh, wow, that's happening right now. So I think like having that moment what you're saying would would be like so it would be yeah beneficial. But, <laughs> but you know what? But major, major fucking props to yourself that you had the ability to. To, I mean, because there's multiple tailors having a conversation in that moment, right? But one part of you, there was a tailor who was like, hey, guys, we're <laughs> being mean right now to ourselves. And like, we're not in the Olympics. If we don't finish this, everything's okay. And the other two maybe won out like in the, in the argument. But you did find the happy medium is where it's at of being gentler and kinder to yourself because it's like you're not training for the Olympics. Nope. Also, it's not, I don't know, I think you've said a few things that have been like, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, so correct me, please, if I'm wrong. But it sounds like in that moment at the gym, there's like a fear of failure. Like if yes. I if I start this thing and I yes. don't do it, I'm failing. <laughs> yeah. And I hear that a little bit in like moving to LA. Is that the same fear? Is that held in like this idea of failure or I think is it so. scary? I think so, Um, you know, with all the like, major things that have happened I've like been through in the past year I think there is like a fear of of letting myself down and more importantly than that like letting other people down and that's Mm -hmm. something that I've have really struggled with and trying to work through um and being home has really put that to the test when you're away from home you can be whoever you want to be you can create the person that you you want to be yeah but when you're around people that you know who have this this image of you 12 year old um, Taylor, your 12 yeah, year old Taylor. Yeah. And, and growing up, honestly, like for background, my, my mom had me when she was pretty young. She was 20. Uh, mm-hmm. She had just turned 20. Mm-hmm. Uh, my dad was young as well. And it changed the trajectory of, of both of their lives. They have great lives. They're happy, but it changed everything. And I had that pressure. I knew that I was very aware of that as a child. And there was always a pressure of like, you have to make it worth it. Like, you have to make it worth it that they, like, yeah, always. I've talked to my mom about this. um, Yeah. But I always felt like I have to to do uh, exceedingly abundantly and above all. Like, you have Mm. to be the best at everything that you're doing. Do well. And in a lot of ways, I was, I tended to do well at things. But then there was a trend. And my dad was always the person to point it out when I would start something new, whether it was cheerleading, whether it was tumbling, whether it was dance, whatever it was, if I wasn't good at it immediately, I would like have a complete meltdown and want to quit. And my dad would have to be the person to be like, no, just stick with it. Like, just let's see how it goes. Like, and that trend has not gone away. It still, it still persists. I'm more aware of it now, but um, it's still something that I struggle with. And I struggle with the pressure of like, Am I going to let my mom down because I don't agree with this stance? Or am I going to let my my dad down because I actually don't want to live my life that way? I want to do this thing. or And that's something that um I've internalized. Yeah. I've internalized yeah. it a lot. So even when it comes to something small like finishing your workout at the gym, um, it's like a, Taylor, you can't, you have to finish this because you have to prove to yourself that you are strong enough to do this thing because it has a long time. It's like, it's a whole dialogue. And even though I'm aware of it, it doesn't, you know, necessarily change it. <laughs> that's that's no. exhausting. It yeah. fuels itself. Yeah. yeah. The idea that there is like a perfect way to succeed. And so that anything other than that is failure is the thing that's a setup. Oh, yeah. It's a setup. And somewhere along the line, a tiny little tailor got created that lives inside you And it's that voice. It's that critic. And the thing that I have learned is that you can't make that go away. But what you can do is quiet that voice. You can say, not right now. It is a part of you, but you can learn to manage it. And you said, like, I'm aware, I'm aware, but that doesn't do anything. That au contraire. I I don't even know why I just said that. But au contraire. um, (laughs) Awareness is the first step. Like, and that allows you that when that moment comes up, when the tiny tailor comes up, you can be like, no, no we're not going to do this right now. We're, we're not going to do this right now. If you, if there was like one thing right now that you felt like might stabilize you, might begin the beginning of this journey for you, and you had a year to kind of like work on living into it, what would it be? Do you know? The first thing that came to my mind was um, 
I want this to be a year where I'm okay with with moving forward. If that if that makes sense, yeah. like, that's the first thing that came to my mind. Or being okay with I don't know if this is negative uh, with letting go. I tend to like hold on to to people, to things, to I just like hold hold it all, and it's very hard for me to like big transitions are usually tough because I'm always thinking, oh man, like what you're letting go of. Yes. And that's hindering me. <laughs> if you let go, what does that look like for you? What appears if you let go? Trying new things, like just Fun. doing doing the things that I, I dream about. That's that's honestly that's okay, that's a better way because that's kind of what this year is about. Is not just dreaming about the life that I want, living it. You can live it. Like it's possible. It doesn't have to be the movie stars and the other people doing it. Like that's part of the reason why I'm moving to LA is because yeah. I was like, I never thought it was something that I could do. It always yes. seemed like something somebody else would do. And uh, one moment I was like. Well, why can't I do it too? Why can't you? You can always move home. Home's not going anywhere. Just do it. Just do it. (laughs) This is wonderful. So like you just gave yourself something to live into in the next year, which is a year of trying new things. And you know what's so fucking amazing about that statement for you is that like that's living in the thing versus living in the fear. And so many new things like your 20s are fucking angsty and hard and wonderful and precarious and exciting. They are all the things. But if you are coming and approaching your 20s and if you are approaching all this transition from the point of view of I'm going to try new things, can you imagine what that life looks like versus approaching all the angst and all of the transition with trying to not make anything change? Hmm. The Mm -hmm. difference, like the sky is the limit if you are approaching transition with, I'm going to try new things. Like there is freedom in that. There is joy in that. There could be failure. There could be hard time. Like you could try some stuff and be like, what have I done? And then you just step out of it. Well, the nice thing about the word try is I feel like it doesn't allude to permanence. Yeah. You know, like you're trying it on. So like you're trying on L.A. You don't have to live in L.A. for the rest of your life. Who the hell knows if that's going to happen? No one. But you're trying it. And I I do think it's important to to make the distinction that you try things responsibly. And I don't mean We all know Taylor's not going to vote to like... Exactly, exactly. Empty out their bank account and like move to fucking Bali or something. But we do have to say that for other people for other people who may be responsible. Like I, I always say like jump, but make sure there's a pad beneath, you know, just like so you're going forward in a responsible way, but try the fuck out of new things, Taylor. I love this for you. Thank you. I'm excited to do new things. Is there a way to begin visualizing and thinking about what your apartment is going to look like? Like, what's your home space? Like, I don't do I like plants. Get a small plant, get a little plant and put it in whatever space you're staying in right now and start to be like, how's this going? Did I kill it? Do I like it? Is this a pain in my ass? (laughs) Like, you know, get yourself a Pinterest board or like a house account and start to think about wall colors and like let some of that energy, that creative energy of what you're going to create for yourself fuel your motivation for the move. But I think just starting to think about that and really looking at your deadline and saying, is this the right deadline for me? I'm not suggesting that you have to move it up, but I am suggesting you look at it to see if if there isn't a way to maybe like expedite things. Mm -hmm. I love that you came in and you let us kind of like pick this apart and talk with you. But I I, like the mom in me has to say this, Taylor, you're doing good. You're doing, you're doing so well (laughs) and you've got this and just like jump a little, like you you have, you've already got the plans. You've got the smarts, you're active and you, you know what you're doing. Trust yourself and, and just go for it. And I would like some kind of an update at some point on your plan and about how you're feeling. And I also want to applaud you for going to therapy and for knowing that, because I think that's also something to keep that support in place. Mm-hmm. It's, it's very helpful during all this transitional time. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. You have reached the well-adjusting expert of the day. 
Hi, I'm Michelle Corey. I'm an audio entrepreneur, which basically means that I'm the CEO and founder of Frequency Media, a three-time award-winning podcast production company for major brands. And I'm also the CEO and founder of Recordical, a membership platform that gives audio creators access to smart studios, equipment lockers, and digital content. I have been through a lot of life transitions in my day, and I know firsthand that whether it's a new job or moving to a new city, a divorce or a new relationship, even if it's an exciting thing, it can represent a lot of adjustments in your life and can feel really taxing mentally, physically, emotionally. Number one thing that I discovered helped me a ton is something a lot of people don't (laughs) want to hear because it seems anticlimactic. And that thing is meditation. Meditation allows you to quiet that bird brain (laughs) or monkey brain, as people call it, and just seek a sense of calm and grounding. It's also a really great way to suss out exactly how you're feeling. So if there's just a bundle of nerves in your gut as part of that excitement, as part of that fear, And if there's fear there, what are you afraid of? If there's excitement, what are you excited about? So it allows you to really tune into your body and get out of the fear of the future or the fear of a past repeating itself. The other thing is going for walks outside, um, particularly if you are in a new city. This is a great way to be among the people without having to interact with anyone just yet if you're shy or introverted It gives you the lay of the land and it also gives you a purpose. So whether you're going for aimless walks outside or actually doing what I like to call urban exploring or urban hiking, it's um, a really good way of getting to know this new location that you're in and feel a sense of confidence that comes with that knowing. And it also gives you a purpose. It gives you a sense of purpose when you're there. Finally, pretend you're an investigator. Go out and everywhere you go, whether it's a coffee shop, if you go to the coffee shop, ask the barista, hey, what's your favorite sandwich place? Or hey, where's your favorite place to grab ramen? Are there any good spots around here for X, Y, Z? Like, hey, when did you move here? Do you like the weather here? I don't know. Pick anything. You'd be surprised how many people will take pride in giving you an inside look into the things that they love. Because when we love something, we want to share it with others. So that's a really great way of getting to know a city or a location and also getting to know new people in a situation. That also applies if you're starting a new job. You can just go around and ask different members of your team what they love to do for fun or like what has been one of the most surprising things for them in their career at this company. Ask people questions, be curious, and the more interested you get, the more interesting you'll be. So great way to make friends and also get some good intel. (laughs) There is another thing that I always like to talk about when it has to do with any kind of major life change that represents anxieties or fears or any kind of uh, what we might consider negative emotions, and that is to sit with those feelings. Like really honor that you feel that way. You don't need to fix it. We don't need to fix how we feel. We can observe how we feel and we can become a lot more curious about how we feel. So if you are in a new situation and it is a scary one versus a very exciting one that might come with a dash of fear, give yourself the permission, give yourself the express permission to feel however you feel. However you feel is valid. So that's a good step in the right direction. Show up as exactly who you are and allow yourself to, as I call it, be as big as you are. Because if what you find is that that is met with enthusiasm and acceptance, you're in the right place. And if it's not, you're probably not in the right place. And you got to find the environment that suits you. Alignment is one of the biggest secrets to a happy life and to navigating life's changes with excitement and enthusiasm versus fear and anxiety. Align. Be yourself. One more thought for me, folks, before we close up this conversation. If you are one of those people who puts a lot of pressure on yourself to be successful and together and in the perfect home and have the perfect partner and, 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 all before you're 25 years old, I have to say this to you. Slow your roll, friend, if you can, okay? You've got lots of time to work. Like, we're talking 50 years, so just take it easy, There are tons of wins that are coming your way. And don't forget that you got to savor everything that you've already done and keep things balanced. What I'm saying is it's a marathon, not a sprint. 
and, and all those other phrases that we like to bandy about when we want everything yesterday. You got this. Hey folks, it's me again. And guess what? I've got some more bonus content for you. Let's call it Where Are They Now? Here's our guest sharing how they're doing since being on Well Adjusting. Oh, and I'll see you on March 19th for our very first episode of season four. Season four. Can you believe it? Whew, I cannot, but I'm so excited. See you soon. Hello. Hello, Well Adjusting. A lot has happened since we last talked. I was planning to move to California. I'm not in California. I am in Charlotte, North Carolina. Decided the Cali at that point in time was just, it was a bit too big of a move and I wanted to do a baby step, but I have my own apartment. Been doing pretty good, I think, at adulting. Um, lots of adjustments, but I've created a space that I absolutely adore and feels like home, it feels like an expression of myself. I adore living here and I feel like this change of environment, change of scenery has pushed me outside of my comfort zone. I've been pursuing other passions, which is really cool. Picking up old hobbies. I started back sewing. I used to sew as a kid. I wanted to be a fashion designer. Um, that's been really fun, making clothing and whatnot. I've been doing art more. I've been writing more. I've been doing yoga. I love yoga now. And I've been able to like find a new gym here and meet some new friends at the gym. I'm still learning how to like meet people. Um, friendships as an adult is difficult. Making new friends is difficult, but I'm making progress and I'm very proud of myself. And I'm so happy and honored that you guys resonated with my episode. Um, life is good, life is really good. It has its ups and downs, of course, lots of adjusting. Sometimes it doesn't feel great, but it is great. And I'm very grateful for where I am in life right now. Yeah, keep listening to the show because it's absolutely amazing. And it gives a platform for everyday people to share their truths. And people like y'all can resonate. And I think that is the beauty of humanity and life. So thanks. Well Adjusting is an edit audio original series. It's exec produced by Steph Colburn and Robin Hopkins. Our producer and editor is Maria Passingham, and our production manager is Kathleen Specker. Thank you to the entire Edit Audio team and to you for listening. Oh, hey, before you take out those AirPods, this show is just for entertainment. If you are in need of help, please, please, please reach out to a professional. Go ahead and get that help. You deserve it. Hi, folks. All right, so season three of Well Adjusting, it's over. Cue the tears. But here's the good news. We are currently working very hard on season four right now, and you know what that means. We want to hear from you. Actually, we want to hear from you in a couple of ways, but the first way is we are looking for guests. So if you are currently working through something and you want an outside perspective, I say get in touch. I mean, maybe you're going through a breakup. Maybe you want advice on saving cash or investments. And you know I love to talk about finances. It could be that you're going to like a big fancy work conference and you're scared that no one's going to talk to you and you're going to you're going to trip and you're going to fall and that's all that anybody's going to remember. Because I do know that that is often my fear. So, whatever is keeping you up at night, we want to hear about it. And we want to help. So, all you have to do is hit us up over email, it's hello at editaud.io, or you can get me at Real Rob Hops on the socials. <sighs> All right, the second way we want to get in touch with you is okay, we've been happily over here in our little well adjusting corner making three seasons of the show, and we're asking ourselves and our team, like, how can we make this podcast even better? But we realized we should ask the people who are actually spending time with us in their ears. Yeah, no, I know that's weird. Okay. Anyway, nobody knows the show better than you, and we know you have thoughts. So we're going to run a little listener survey, and we want to know what you love about the show and what you think could be improved. So if you're always like, oh, I wish Robin would stop talking about her baths, or Ugh, I want to hear more about those experts at the end, now is your time. 
So if you're listening to this as a podcast, check the show notes. Now, if you're seeing this on the socials, there'll be a link in bio and you can just fill out our super short survey. Like it'll literally take you three minutes. Okay. And we will forever love you. And, and I mean, we will love you anyway, but you know, we could use the help. So, okay. I'm rambling. It's what I do. We know this. That's it for me. All the links, all the junk in the show notes, if you're listening or check my socials and we will see you for season four or maybe before. I don't know. Keep looking for us.